So here we are at the new Matt Cardox Bison fill station where we are going to go over the rebuilding and charging procedures of the Cardox tube, getting it ready to fire. Our first step in this process is to lock the Cardox tube into the vise. Our first thing is we're going to center the Cardox tube in the vise. Orientation of the bleed off hold down, locking the tube in place. Today we are using the F57 series Cardox tube for training purposes. The process and procedures are going to be exactly the same regardless of what series Cardox tube you are using. Please consult your technical manual if you have any questions about the components that make up your Cardox system. We've got the Cardox tube centered in the vise. Orientation of the bleed off hole is facing down. We're going to take our quarter inch Allen wrench to the bleeder screw, opening the bleeder screw verifying whether or not the Cardox tube is charged with liquid CO2. In all the years that I've been dealing with Cardox in my experience, to me the most important aspect of the Cardox tube process and procedures is the bleeder screw. The bleeder screw is going to verify whether or not that Cardox tube is under pressure and it needs to be discharged every single time you touch that Cardox tube to go rebuild it. So we've got the Cardox tube locked in the vise. We've taken our quarter inch Allen wrench, opened up the bleeder screw, verifying whether or not there is liquid CO2. Uh, the tube is empty. Now it's time to rotate the Cardox tube to where the activating end is facing up, ready for the next step. Now we are going to prepare the fill end of the Cardox tube by removing the activating head. Take your impact, ensuring the impact is in the reverse location. Set it onto the activating head. Bump the trigger enough to break the seal, then spin the activating head the rest of the way off by hand. Once the activating head has been removed from the Cardox tube, you're going to ensure that there is no dirt and debris on the electrode assembly. You're also going to verify that the CO2 bleed off and fill hole is free of debris, any buildup. Uh, if you do find debris and buildup inside of the activating head, wipe out the inside of it, get as much as you can. If that does not do the trick, take your air wand and blow air inside of the active, activating head, clearing off any dirt and debris that may be inside. If you happen to have an activating head that is uh, having issues getting continuity, this would be the time where you would check the torque on your electrode assembly inside the activating head. It's not a common occurrence, but it's something else that you can check uh, in your troubleshooting steps. Using a pair of needle nose pliers or some type of hook tool, remove the spent heater. Grabbing the cap, pulling it out, make sure you maintain your clearance on the threads in the seat area in the tube. Using your air wand located at your Cardox vise, you're going to blow out the inside of the threads in the seat area on the activating end of the tube, ensuring that all dirt and debris has been removed. Now we're going to inspect the threads in the seat area on the activating end of the Cardox tube. What you're looking for is excessive wear or pitting due to moisture buildup. If the threads look solid and intact, it, in the Cardox tube, you're good to go. If there's any questions about excessive wear or pitting on the threads, please contact your Numat Systems representative. They will let you know if you need to send the Cardox tube in for service or if you can proceed and continue using that Cardox tube. Now the activating end of the Cardox tube has been disassembled. We're going to focus on the discharge end of the Cardox tube. By rotating the Cardox tube in the vise 180 degrees, to where the discharge end is facing up. You can take your impact and loosen and remove the discharge head in the same manner we did the activating head. Put the impact on the discharge head, ensuring that the reverse is on. Bump the trigger, breaking the seal, spin the discharge off by hand. We're going to remove the spent ruptured disc and copper gasket. If you do have to dig these out, maintain your clearance as it was on the activating end of the Cardox tube, uh, ensuring that you're not boogering up the threads or the seat area uh, on the discharge end of the Cardox tube. With a cloth, wipe out any debris on the threads in the seat area. Any remaining debris can be blown out with the air. 
Now we're going to inspect the threads in the seat area on the Cardox tube end, looking for excessive wear or pitting. Uh, if there's ever any questions about whether or not your tube is going to seal, contact your Numat representative. We're going to take a new rupture disc and copper gasket. Copper gasket goes down first, ensuring that it lays flat on the seat. Rupture disc goes next, ensuring that the rounded edge of the shear disc is down into the tube end. When inspecting the discharge head, what we're looking for is excessive wear on the face area or on the threads area. Take your discharge head, pneumatic air oil, just enough oil on the threads to lubricate. Take the discharge head, spin it on by hand until it makes contact with the seat. Take your impact, making sure that it is in the forward motion, putting it on the head. Three good trigger pulls with the impact is more than enough to secure that uh, discharge head onto the Cardox tube. We have rebuilt the discharge end of the Cardox tube and we are now ready to focus on the activating end or fill end of the Cardox tube. Our first step is going to be rotate the vise 180 degrees to where the fill end is facing up. We are now going to replace the Cardox heater inside of the tube, first ensuring that the contact wire is one or two strands above the black cap, ensuring that we have continuity or connection with the electrode assembly. Install the new Cardox safety heater inside of the tube, ensuring that it sits flat and your copper wire is up. Take your activating head, lubricate the threads with oil, place the activating head on the end of the tube, thread on by hand, so you make contact with the seat, take your impact in the forward motion. As it was on the discharge end of the tube, three good trigger pulls lasting up to about three seconds should create that seal between the heater and the activating head. Before we remove the Cardox tube from the vise, we're going to ensure that the Cardox heater and the electrode assembly in the activating head are making good contact. When checking for continuity on the activating head, make sure you use a blaster's ohmmeter and not an electrician's ohmmeter. Uh, an electrician's ohmmeter actually emits electricity, which could set the Cardox heater off inside of the tube when you're not ready for it. The ends of the ohmmeter are inserted into the contact sleeves on the activating head. One to three ohms verifies that you have a good connection between the electrode assembly and the copper wire on the top of the Cardox heater. For safety purposes and to ensure that no electrical charge, even as small as a static charge, makes it to the contact sleeves, take electrical tape, tape over both contact sleeves on each side of the Cardox tube, maintaining the clearance on the check valve assembly. Your Cardox tube is ready for charging. So we have the Cardox tube rebuilt and it's ready for charging. Our first step is to make sure that the bleeder screw valve is closed. Taking your quarter inch Allen wrench onto the bleeder screw, turning it until it makes contact with the seat and then snugging it from there. The bleeder screw is tight. Now we are going to weigh the empty Cardox tube. Remove the Cardox tube from the vise. Place the Cardox tube on the scale, setting your tear weight to zero. Please keep one thing in mind. You do not have to weigh every Cardox tube that you rebuild and charge. Uh, this is more of a troubleshooting fallback just in case you're having problems with misfires or you just don't seem like you're getting enough liquid CO2 inside of that tube. You need to fall back to this step, weigh the Cardox tube to ensure that you're getting enough liquid CO2 inside. We have our empty weight on the Cardox tube. Now it's ready for the fill station. Take the Cardox tube, align the check valve assembly with the fill fitting on the Cardox fill station, securing the Cardox tube to the fill station. 
We are now ready to charge the Cardox tube that has been rebuilt. Our first thing is we're going to turn the CO2 bottle on. Make sure that your discharge valve is closed. Open up your CO2 fill valve and your pump's going to start. What you're looking for is between 8 to 10 seconds in between pumps. That's going to give you the indication that the Cardox tube is full and it's ready to be removed from the fill station. You can hear now that the uh, reach recycling of the pump and the time between it is starting to spread out. Before too long, it'll be at that 8 to 10 seconds in between each recycle of the pump. That's the indication that your Cardox tube is going to be full. At this point, shut your fill valve off. Slowly open up your discharge valve, bleeding off any remaining CO2 that happens to be trapped in the manifold on the fill station. Remove the Cardox tube from the fill stand. We're going to check to make sure that neither end of the Cardox tube is leaking. Dip the discharge end of the Cardox tube into the water. I see no bubbles. We're going to do the activating end as well. If you happen to see bubbles, that means the Cardox tube is leaking. It's going to leak through the bleeder screw, check valve assembly, electrode assembly, or through the threads. Verify where it is leaking from. Reseal, refill, and re-verify. We've verified that there is no leaks. We've resealed and we've refilled. Now we're going to weigh the Cardox tube to make sure that we have enough liquid CO2 inside of that tube before we fire it. We have two series of Cardox tubes, the F57 series and the B37 series. The F57 series requires 1.8 to 2.2 pounds of liquid CO2 for proper activation. The B37 series requires 1.3 to 1.7 pounds of liquid CO2 for proper activation. If your Cardox tube does not have the proper amount of liquid CO2, you may have to refill the Cardox tube by adjusting your air pressure, getting that PSI between 90 to 100, which is your optimal operating range uh, for filling a Cardox tube properly. We've ran through the rebuilding and charging procedures for the Cardox tube, and it's ready to be fired. Keep in mind, at this point, the Cardox tube is charged. This is where it's at its most dangerous point. It needs to be handled safely. It needs to be transported safely. Don't put it on the shelf. It cannot be stored for later use. It needs to be used immediately. Thanks for choosing Cardox by Numat Systems. We strive day in and day out to provide our customers with the most reliable and dependable Cardox system that has ever been built. We're proud of that. We are here to help at any given time. If you have questions, concerns, need to work through something, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to walk you through that process, keeping your product moving at your facility safer, faster, and easier. So from time to time, you're going to have to rebuild uh, your activating head, replacing the electrode assembly, check valve assembly, or the bleeder screw once these items fail. We currently have two activating heads, version one, version two. Both of these heads will work on any tubes that you currently have at your facility. They share the same bleeder screws and check valve assemblies. The only difference is, is the length of the electrode assembly. You need to determine which activating head you have so you know what electrode assembly you need. To determine which activating head you have, you need to look at the overall length of the head. The version 1 activating head is 5 and a quarter inches long. The version 2 activating head is 4 and 3 quarter inches long. You can also determine which activating head version you have by the lot numbers that are stamped on the heads. 32 and lower is going to be a version 1 activating head. 33 and higher is a version 2 activating head. The first part on the activating head that I'm going to replace is going to be the bleeder screw. It does fail from time to time, and if you have a clear indication that the bleeder screw is leaking, it will need to be replaced. Take your quarter inch Allen wrench, insert it into the bleeder screw cap, loosening and removing the bleeder screw from the activating head. Taking your new bleeder screw to your quarter inch Allen wrench, insert it into the bleeder screw cavity, threading it into the activating head. Make contact with the seat, snug from there. Make sure you do not over tighten or you will damage the bleeder screw itself.
The next item we're going to replace on the activating head is the check valve assembly. The check valve assembly is the most common item that will be replaced while rebuilding the activating head. Using your 3 16 Allen wrench, insert it into the check valve assembly seat, loosening, threading the cap out by hand. Remove the old check valve assembly. We have the old check valve assembly removed, ready to replace it with the new one. Take the spring, install it onto the plunger, take the activating head, lay it on its side, uh, insert the spring and plunger into the check valve assembly cavity, taking your check valve seat, threading it into that cavity, taking your 3 16 Allen wrench, and tighten the check valve assembly. The check valve assemblies are engineered to where they cannot be over tightened by hand. Now I'm going to show you how to replace the electrode assembly in the activating head. This is very rarely done out in the field, but it's something you still need to know how to do. The first step is to remove the old electrode assembly. Now we're going to remove the old electrode assembly from inside the activating head. So before we install the new electrode assembly, you need to make sure that you have the correct electrode assembly for the version of head that you are about to repair. This is a version one activating head, so we have a version one electrode assembly. The process to replace version one and version two electrode assemblies is going to be the same regardless of what head you have. Insert the new electrode assembly into the electrode assembly cavity in the activating head. Taking your torque wrench, make sure it's at 40 foot-pounds and continue tighten the electrode assembly till it has the required torque. Your electrode assembly is installed and torqued.